Now here's a bit of a funny one, it's really got me thinking this. Um, that's uh, a spectrum analyzer showing a frequency um, from a signal generator. Not directly from a signal generator, it's coming from the signal generator. That frequency, at that power, dBm, and then it goes along a cable through a meter. You see there it's showing about um, just uh, under 400 milliwatts. That's the maximum the signal generator will do. And then it goes through this sniffer and then into a dummy load. Now the sniffer passes through the signal and takes a very small representative sample from the coupler or sniffer, whatever you like to call it. It's adjustable by this wheel here. <clears throat> and then it goes to the uh, spectrum analyzer and it shows that signal there, 105.5. Now about twice that should be uh, 212 or something. That's the second harmonic of the frequency. As you see, it's very insignificant. It's, it's minus 50 dB from the uh, fundamental frequency, which is good. That's what we like. Um, I've just chosen this frequency uh, because it's one I struck up upon. The frequency, that I'm, the, the effect that I'm about to show you isn't as profound on other frequencies. It's a bit um, very dependent on exactly where you are in the band, which is maybe why I've not discovered it until recently. Okay, and also coupled to this is a frequency counter. It's an old-fashioned, fairly old-fashioned uh, one, one of the early sort of ones that are sensitive, sensitive enough to just couple to an aerial and sniff a frequency out of the air, out of thin air. Um, it's a bit, a bit of a travesty because I've got a T-piece there uh, and from the sniffer, which is roughly, I guess, 50 ohms, although it's probably not all that, um, that accurate, um, then goes the T-piece. Both these instruments are 50 ohms, so that's 50 ohms in there, that's 50 ohms in the top there of the frequency counter. They're in um, parallel effectively, which will give me 25 watts total load, theoretically. It's going to be somewhere around there, which is a bit of a travesty. We know these things. We kind of take account for them. So I'm going to switch on the, the frequency counter, and there's my 105.6 megahertz on there. But at the same time as doing that, notice that's off again, and that's on. Notice that the the uh, the peak power, the power of that uh, that carrier there, dips down very very slightly. Now, if I switch it off again, restored to where it was. If I remove the BNC from the top, well, that's that in and out. It's I mean it's there, but it's barely a discernible difference in power level that's shown. Now that's just when it gets really weird. If we look at the second harmonic that we were looking at before, frequency times two, at about 213 meg, 212 meg. There it is, very slightly there. My frequency counter is switched off. If I switch my frequency counter on, wallop. Now isn't that bizarre? Frequency counter is now on. If I switch it off, down it goes, almost disappeared. And as I said, just like before, it's not dependent on whether that is plugged in or not. I mean, well, it, yes, it is. I mean, it is uh, dependent on if it's plugged in or not. But uh, if I switch the frequency counter off, it then has very little effect as to whether it's plugged in or not. That's what I was trying to get at. So that's that's bizarre, and it's pretty much the same thing happens with the uh, with the third, fourth, fifth harmonics. Um, now, you know, I mean, initially, it just looks as if the frequency counter is tracking the frequency, reproducing it, and coming back down to the um, spectrum analyzer, but that's just really hard to imagine it's doing anything like that. So I'm scratching my head and working out what that can be and what sort of effect that is. Of course, that's got me going, that one has. A bit of a strange one. Any answers on a postcard, or if you want to do it the good old modern way, at the bottom of this uh, video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.